8. Ambrogio, you know. The more I think about your free communism the more I am persuaded that you are, a true original. Giorgio, and why is that? Ambrogio, because you always talk about work, enjoyment, accords, agreements, but you never talk of social authority, of government. Who will regulate social life? What will be the government? How will it be constituted? Who will elect it? By what means will it ensure that laws are respected and offenders punished? How will the various powers be constituted, legislative, executive or judicial? Giorgio, we don't know what to do with all these powers of yours. We don't want a government. Are you still not aware that I am an anarchist? Ambrogio, well, I've told you that you are an original. I could still understand communism and admit that it might be able to offer great advantages, if everything were to be still regulated by an enlightened government, which had the strength to make everybody have a respect for the law. But like this, without government, without law, what kind of muddle would there be? Giorgio, I had foreseen this, first you were against communism because you said that it needed a strong and centralized government, now that you have heard talk of a society without government, you would even accept communism, so long as there was a government with an iron fist. In short, it is liberty which scares you most of all. Ambrogio, but this is to jump out of the frying pan into the fire. What is certain is that a society without a government cannot exist. How would you expect things to work, without rules, without regulations of any kind? What will happen is that someone will steer to the right, somebody else to the left and the ship will remain stationary, or more likely, go to the bottom. Giorgio, I did not say that I do not want rules and regulations. I said to you that I don't want a government, and by government I mean a power that makes laws and imposes them on everybody. Ambrogio, but if this government is elected by the people doesn't it represent the will of those same people? What could you complain about? Giorgio, this is simply a lie. A general, abstract, popular will is no more than a metaphysical fancy. The public is comprised of people, and people have a thousand different and varying wills according to variations in temperament and in circumstances, and expecting to extract from them, through the magic operation of the ballot box, a general will common to all is simply an absurdity. It would be impossible even for a single individual to entrust to somebody else the execution of their will on all the questions that could arise during a given period of time, because they themselves could not say in advance what would be their will on these various occasions. How could one speak for a collectivity, people, whose members at the very time of producing a mandate were already in disagreement among themselves? Just think for a moment at the way elections are held, and note that, I intend speaking about the way they would work if all the people were educated and independent and thus the vote perfectly conscious and free. You, for instance, would vote for whoever you regard as best suited to serve your interests and to apply your ideas. This is already conceding a lot, because you have so many ideas and so many different interests that you would not know how to find a person that thinks always like you on all issues but will it be then to such a person that you will give your vote and who will govern you? By no means. Your candidate might not be successful and so your will forms no part of the so-called popular will, but let's suppose that they do succeed. On this basis would this person be your ruler? Not even in your dreams. They would only be one among many in the Italian parliament for instance one among 535, and you in reality will be ruled by a majority of people to whom you have never given your mandate. And this majority, whose members have received many different or contradictory mandates, or better still have received only a general delegation of power, without any specific mandate, unable, even if it wanted to, to ascertain a non-existent general will, and to make everybody happy, 
will do as it wishes, or will follow the wishes of those who dominate it at a particular moment. Come on, it's better to leave aside this old-fashioned pretense of a government that represents the popular will. There are certainly some questions of general order, about which at a given moment, all the people will agree. But, then, what is the point of government? When everybody wants something, they will only need to enact it. Ambrogio, well in short, you have admitted that there is a need for rules, some norms for living. Who should establish them? Giorgio, the interested parties themselves, those who must follow these regulations. Ambrogio, who would impose observance? Giorgio, no one, because we are talking about norms which are freely accepted and freely followed. Don't confuse the norms of which I speak, that are practical conventions based on a feeling of solidarity and on the care that everyone must have for the collective interest, with the law which is a rule written by a few and imposed with force on everybody. We don't want laws, but free agreements. Ambrogio, and if someone violates the agreement? Giorgio, and why should someone violate an agreement with which they have has concurred? On the other hand, if some violations were to take place, they would serve as a notification that the agreement does not satisfy everybody and will have to be modified. And everybody will search for a better arrangement, because it is in everybody's interest that nobody is unhappy. Ambrogio, but it seems that you long for a primitive society in which everyone is self-sufficient and the relations between people are few, basic, and restricted. Giorgio, not at all. Since from the moment that social relations multiply and become more complex, humanity experiences greater moral and material satisfaction, we will seek relationships as numerous and complex as possible. Ambrogio, but then you will need to delegate functions, to give out tasks, to nominate representatives in order to establish agreements. Giorgio, certainly. But don't think that this is equivalent to nominating a government. The government makes laws and enforces them, while in a free society delegation of power is only for particular, temporary tasks, for certain jobs, and does not give rights to any authority nor any special reward. And the resolutions of the delegates are always subject to the approval of those they represent. Ambrogio, but you don't imagine that everyone will always agree. If there are some people that your social order does not suit, what will you do? Giorgio, those people will make whatever arrangements best suit them, and we, and they will reach an agreement to avoid bothering each other. Ambrogio, and if the others want to make trouble? Giorgio, then, we will defend ourselves. Ambrogio, ah. But don't you see that from this need for defense a new government might arise? Giorgio, certainly I see it, and it is precisely because of this that I've always said that anarchism is not possible until the most serious causes of conflict are eliminated, a social accord serves the interests of all, and the spirit of solidarity is well developed among humanity. If you want to create anarchism today, leaving intact individual property and the other social institutions that derive from it, such a civil war would immediately break out that a government, even a tyranny, would be welcomed as a blessing. But if at the same time that you establish anarchism you abolish individual property, the causes of conflict that will survive will not be insurmountable and we will reach an agreement, because with agreement everyone will be advantaged. After all, it is understood that institutions are only worth as much as the people that make them function, and anarchism in particular, that is the reign of free agreement, cannot exist if people do not understand the benefits of solidarity and don't want to agree. That is why we engage in spreading propaganda.